There it is. There we are. morning and welcome to St. George's Episcopal Church. I'm Reverend Aaron Maxfield Steele. I'm the priest in charge here. And uh, next to me and on the piano is Reverend Deacon Michael Ashmore. And uh, welcome to this uh, this continued strange pandemic existence of uh, being physically separated together in spirit and um, and in our own homes. And Michael and I were just both agreeing that we're both feeling a little bleary eyed today. So if you are too, then you're in good company. <laughs> and if you're not, then, uh, then you'll have a, a chance to be patient with, with us, uh, with me. I um, invite you to just take a moment to think about the noises in your home. Um, as most Sunday mornings, I've got pajamas in the background, which is a kid's TV program. And uh, if you have cars driving by, if you have distractions um, and sort of the noises of everyday life. Just notice where your feet are, where your hands are. Take a couple deep breaths. While we are away from the physical sanctuary of St. George's, um, we know that God meets us where we are and that that is the reality all the time. Um, but this morning we need to name that and remember that because the space that has been um, not set aside for the holy maybe but has been set aside for the everyday and the and uh, the things that we might consider mundane we're recognizing as holy ground and holy space right now um, I welcome you to uh, put your name in the chat if you are visiting us for the first time or if you're new um, one of the disappointing things about being virtual is that we don't know and see when we see a new face um, and so we would love to greet you so if you are uh, with us for the first time and whether that's live or um, recorded on our YouTube channel um, please 
let us know so that we can welcome you in some way and welcome. Our bulletin can be found at stgeorgeswavl.org. And I'll put that back. I think I've got, got that somewhere. There it is. Um, I mentioned this uh, over the last couple of weeks, but I'll mention it again since it differs a bit from our bulletin. We will not have any music today other than the music that Michael shared um, and a couple a cappella things um, that are part of the service itself. Um, and that has been a, a gift to me is sort of a, having a little break from, um, from playing music. So uh, we will have music again soon uh, at some point for some special occasion. So. You ready, Michael? Jimmy? Ready. Yep, Jimmy's ready. <laughs> <laughs> Blessed are you, holy and living one. You come to your people and set them free. I invite you to sing the Gloria with me. And if you'd like to sing this in a round, uh, feel free to. And sing it as loud as your household can handle. Um, and we'll sing this three times. Please join me. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia. Hallelujah. May God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people. And in our time, grant us your peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I forgot to mention that um, the weekly email that has the, uh, the readings for this morning uh, didn't get sent out until uh, very, very late compared to what we usually do. And so it should be in your mailbox if you, um, if you subscribe to our See, this is the bleariness. <laughs> Email list. <laughs> um, anyway, it uh, it would have a time marking of about 12 minutes ago because uh, I sh shot it out at the last minute. So uh, it should be there. And the benefit is it's probably right at the top of your inbox. Um, and the readings should be there. Oops. Sorry, that wasn't supposed to be there. That was my thumb. Ignore that. <laughs> Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. But I, I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 111. And um, 
Michael, let's read this responsibly by whole verse. Okay. Um, would you start? Yes, ma'am. Alleluia, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. O Lord, your work is full of majesty and splendor, and your righteousness endures forever. You make your marvelous works to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you. You are ever mindful of your covenant. You have shown you have your shown... people. Oh, sorry. Sorry, no, that's you. Oh, you have shown your people the power of your works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All your commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. You send redemption to your people. You commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. The praise of the Lord endures forever. Our second reading this morning comes from the letter of Paul to the Corinthians, the, the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 13. Now concerning food sacrifice to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to, eating, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we ex from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we did if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours did not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound your conscience, then it is when it is weak you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fall. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Christ. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with this Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread. Sorry. One, at once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. 
Christ. Michael, I'm going to bump you off for a second. Okay. <laughs> Just in case you, you want to doze off during the sermon. <laughs> <laughs> a little coffee. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I give you all, and I didn't really say welcome to the folks who are here, so let me do that first real quick. Um, Denny, Noel, Willie, Susan, Bruce, Brian, um, Barbara, Raymond, welcome Raymond. Um, Chris is with us, Christopher, Jillian, Molly, and Marsha, Joy, Regina, and uh, I bet Tinchy's somewhere around there too, and John might be around there too, and Anne and uh, others. So uh, welcome, it's good to be with you. And uh, it's, it's always nice to remind myself who is really with me, that I'm, I'm not really all by myself in, um, in our little baby room office here. Hey, Aaron. Um, I want to give you a real quick uh, heads up before I start preaching. And, uh, and that's just because I, I know the statistics um, and I want to be, uh, I want to be gentle um, where people need gentleness. So uh, I am going to mention um, sexual violence against women in my sermon this morning. And if you need to just not uh, think about that or hear that, Right now, uh, you can tune back in in about 15 minutes. That's that's my goal is to keep it between 10 and 15 minutes. Um, and I'm not sure how well I stick to that goal. I might be off by a lot. I've never really kept track. Um, but um, but also, if you would like um, the notes to this sermon, uh, please let me know either in the chat or, um, or you can just shoot me an email or send me a text. My contact info is on our website. Um, and I'm happy to share that with you if you'd rather do that instead of hearing it. That said, there's nothing explicit um, or or sort of, um, you know, even PG-13 in terms of uh, the specifics of what I'm going to be talking about. So, please pray yeah. with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, God, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. Ursa is finding his voice, and it's, um, it's wonderful to watch. If you've been around little ones, it is always surprising, no matter how much we know about child development, um, to sort of see these different words pop out. And it's not just um, speech. He's learning some signs, and he's also uh, gesturing. Uh, he's pulling things towards him and pushing things away, um, really making choices and saying yes and no to things. Um, you know, I want that. I don't want that. And uh, and it's it's amazing to see him growing in in confidence and and sort of trying out these these new these new things. We sing a lot of songs together. Uh, I sort of sing incessantly when I'm alone, and I've carried on that practice with Ursa and. Um, and one of the things that he did the other day was uh, he went like this. And uh, in ASL, this is the sign for animals. And uh, and so I started singing this song that we sing together about animals. It's in ASL, donkey, frog, and learning all these different things. And, uh, and so I started singing that song. And he started laughing. And so now he goes, goes all the way around the house and... Um, the minute you say animal, or even if he's just looking at one of his books that has animals, he'll put his little fists together and go like this. Our voices are so significant. Whether we speak with our hands or with our vocal cords, our voices are symbolic of who we are, of our desires, of the space that our bodies take up. They enable us to communicate with one another. They enable us to say yes and to say no. They share how we feel, how we think, the things that we long for. In this morning's gospel, we have um, words that are not often associated with compassion, that aren't often associated with love. Jesus says, be silent. Be silent. And I think these are among the most loving, compassionate words that Jesus speaks throughout the Gospels. Be silent. 
In Mark's gospel, we hear a story of a man who has been violated by an unclean spirit, a man whose body and voice have been taken over by something that is not him. This spirit speaks out of his body, overshadows him, subsumes him, speaks for him, silences him. It occupies him. Last year, over a million women in South America, in, in the country of Chile specifically, gathered to protest violence against women. And if you have in mind a protest as, you know, people in, in lines marching and maybe, maybe chanting but holding signs, that's not quite what this looked like. This protest did involve marching, but um, but it also involved sort of chanting and singing and dance. And I'll describe it to you. So imagine um, thousands of women filling up the space of a large colonial era square. And these women aren't just sort of gathered haphazardly, they're gathered and they're sort of spaced out and they're in lines and rows. All of a sudden, one woman who has a kazoo makes a little trumpet noise, and these women straighten their bodies and begin to move their bodies from side to side in rhythm with one another. And then their voices join together and form this chant that is, it's almost like a chant that you would hear in a stadium at a football game or a big soccer game or some big sporting event where there's all of these different voices all together and they're not just speaking, they're shouting. And they shout, El patriarcado es un juez que nos juzga por nacer. Y nuestro castigo es la violencia que ya ves. Don't worry, I won't ever speak Spanish without translating it. The patriarchy is a judge that judges us for being born. And our punishment is the violence that you see. And the song continues as they move their bodies and as they shift, cross their arms. And many of these women are have their eyes covered, they continue, violence against women, femicidio, impunity for my murderer, disappearance, violacion, rape. Women have experienced violence. Women continue to experience violence. That's part of the reason I gave that warning at the beginning of this uh, sermon, because I know that the statistics are, or at least the last time I checked, were one in three. And every group of women I've been with, trans, cis, all of us, um, those statistics have proven correct. We women who have experienced violence, and I think by association, all women, we are often taught to internalize the shame of what has been done to us, of the violence that we have received without having said yes to it, of the abuse. Many of us are silenced by that shame, or perhaps we speak up and it is dismissed. Many women will be able to tell you stories of telling, reporting their experience and not being believed being doubted, having their experience be questioned. For that reason and others, many women never report abuse, which we saw uh, a few years ago and, and continue to see as we watch in the news, many women wait years, decades to share what has happened to them. It's a second violence and a second violation to be silenced and it happens after that first violation. 
one of the most powerful parts of this song, this chant that all these women sang, is something that might seem a little bit normal. Some of the questions that women often are asked after they have, um, after they have um, been the, the victims of violence are, where were you or how late was it? And one of the questions that is very demeaning is, what were you wearing? Those questions are inappropriate and upsetting because they imply that it is the fault of the victim rather than the aggressor's fault alone. So imagine these women moving together, chanting together. And in the videos that you can see of this, of this, um, this protest song, almost all of these videos, when it comes to this part of the song that I'm going to share with you, they really find their rhythm and match their voices perfectly to the voices around them. And there's this new vigor to their voices. They say, it wasn't my fault, not where I was or how I was dressed. Y la culpa no era mía, ni donde estaba, ni como vestía. Y la culpa no era mía, ni donde estaba, ni como vestía. In Spanish, the verb violar and the English verb to violate, um, they share a common root, but they have different meanings. They both speak to violation, but violar is translated to rape. This is one of the, th one of the um, things that you have to be cautious with when you're learning a new language. But I think to violate is exactly what has happened in this gospel passage. This man has been overtaken without his consent. He has been occupied. He has been abused. And so there are these words, again, that we don't associate with compassion, with love, with Jesus. Be silent. They are the most loving words to a person whose voice has been overshadowed, whose voice has been silenced. Jesus speaks directly to this demon who actually is testifying as to who Jesus is in public. In Mark's gospel, what we hear is that Jesus does nothing other than silence and rebuke this demon. Jesus says, be silent come out of him. No one has the right to speak for you. No one has the right to tell your story. No one has the right to silence you. Your voice matters. Your power matters. Imagine Christ speaking to this demon, to this unclean spirit. Now imagine all of the things that silence us, all of us. All of the things that silence the oppressed, the ashamed, the broken, the needy. Now imagine Christ speaking, be silent, to those powers that silence. That is work that we can receive as we own our own voices and our own stories and have the courage to speak for ourselves. That is an example that we can take up as we elevate the voices of others, especially those who are not heard enough, who are silenced, and though we cannot speak for anyone else and no one can speak for us, we can join our voices together. We can lift our voices with Christ's voice and tell the violators, the occupiers, the violent to be quiet, to be silent. Amen.
Oh my goodness. Oh good. Everybody's still there. <laughs> Man, you'd think that my fingers were like the size of like, I don't know, like my whole hand that I'm like punching, <laughs> punching my phone around. <laughs> all of a sudden, all of you were gone. I was like, oh no. Oh, there you are. So good to see you. And it's so good to be laughed at, Michael. So appreciate you. <laughs> Please join us in our liturgical affirmation found in your bulletin. You, O oh God, are supreme and holy. You create our world and give us life. Your purpose overarches everything we do. You have always been with us. You are God. You, O oh God, are infinitely generous, good beyond all measure. You came to us before we came to you. You have revealed and proved your love for us in Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again. You are with us now. You are God. You, O oh God, are Holy Spirit. You empower us to be your gospel in the world. You reconcile and heal. You overcome death. You are our God. We worship you. Amen. Let us pray. God, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Lord God Almighty, you have made all the peoples of the earth for your glory to serve you in freedom and in peace. Give to the people of our country a zeal for justice and the strength of forbearance that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will, God of love and mercy. Hear our prayer. Kindle, we pray in every heart, the true love of peace and God with your wisdom, those who take counsel for the nations of the earth that in tranquility your dominion may increase until the earth is filled with your not with the knowledge of your love, God of love and mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. I invite you to um, type those in the chat box and uh, Aaron and I will take a look at those. Um, I ask your prayers, especially today for um, Rhonda and Ronnie and Ernestine and I give thanks like you just wouldn't believe for my old buddy Raymond's here this morning Raymond <laughs> Raymond and I have known each other forever and he lives in DC and um, Raymond I went out when um, Aaron said Raymond I looked I'm, I'm like oh my gosh it is that <laughs> it's, my, it's my Raymond anyway um, I got all my aunts and uncles last week and you <laughs> I love it <laughs> Anyway, Raymond, I'm so happy to see your little name in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, in fact, it's so here's one. I'll I'll shut up in a minute, but I want to say one little thing. When before I came to St. George's, Raymond, Raymond and Patrick and I took the dogs to walk, and we were talking about you know where the bishop might put me. And Raymond said, "Oh man, you need to go to St. George's. I hope you ended up at St. George's." And so here I'm at St. George's, and there's my little prayer my little prayer man oh Raymond. your little prayer warrior little, yeah my little you know, prayer the way partner you're talking about Raymond, Raymond. i think he must be about three inches tall <laughs> <laughs> he's a little he's he's about four feet tall he's a little taller than that <laughs> okay i love it well you pretty much beat me yeah he's a pretty pretty normal size 
<laughs> well, he says it's good to be with you this morning, so that's good. Well, Raymond, thank you for uh, for manifesting uh, God's will in bringing Michael to us. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful gift. Um, I wanted to lift up uh, Susan and Andy, who um, have been joining us recently. Um, their cat has been very sick, and just just prayer for praise, prayers for them um, and for their for their beloved kitty. Um, and Michael, can you see the comments or? Yes, yes, I can. Ashley okay. Thomas says continued prayers for the park wreck for. Clark Wagner as he fights his battle against cancer and a co-worker, Barbara, who is dealing far too much with death and sickness. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, Jillian says, happy birthday, Maddie. And congratulations from Molly Johnson to Joe and Sally on their 50th anniversary. From Susan Sacco, prayers for my friends back home, still struggling with cancer diagnosis. No answers, but lots of fear, uncertainty, and feeling. Wish them peace and comfort. They feel alone. Willie says, please pray for an elderly couple, John and Janice, for health and family issues. And I think we can, I think we can pray for our, for our, Sweet Aaron this morning, who's in the middle of a move, and we. we <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> so pr prayers that she had that her arms are strong. Yeah, right. <laughs> her inner inner painting arm strong. Oh my goodness, my right arm has got a lot stronger than it was. Mm -hmm. Um, I think. Oh, I wanted to say Molly lifts up that it's Madison. Uh, Madison's birthday today. She's turning 15. Um, and I just wanted to uh, say a quick prayer for her. So please pray with me. Oh God, watch over your child as her days increase. Bless and guide Madison wherever she may go. Strengthen her when she stands, comfort her when she is discouraged or sorrowful, raise her up if she falls, and in her heart may your peace, which passes all understanding, remain with her all the days of her life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And Madison, if you were uh, here right now, I would put my hands on you and um, and offer you God's blessing in this new year of your life um, and gratitude for all of these years that you have lived so far, for the wisdom that you've gained um, and for just the wonderful human being that you are. So happy birthday. Uh, um, well, Joyce says our son Walter tested positive with no symptoms and Wendy had symptoms there in the eighth day of quarantine. And Joy also, her sister Judy is in crisis her living safe, safely, safely in her apartment. Mm. Yikes. And Thanksgiving for Dan's return to health and work. And for those of you who don't know, Walter is Alan's brother. And thanks, Aaron, for that sermon this morning, man. Oh. That was um that was a humdinger. <laughs> <laughs> um I, I think it's uh, especially now I, I think it's something every I think we all need to hear it. And anyway, thank you for doing that. You're welcome. And if there's you know, if there are ways that are um you know, I think that this that the message of that I hope is is really relevant to us as a little community that mm -hmm. if uh if any of us um are silencing one another that that uh, we need to not do that and um, that uh, that if anyone need our voices if we need our voices elevated or, or need encouragement and, and comfort in doing that because it can be a scary thing um, that we we know we're all we're all here for each other so. um, uh, yes, I will share the link um, to the protest in, in Chile. 
actually, I think I can do that right now. Um, give me just one minute. Oops. <laughs> All right, so apparently I can, I can share the request for the link. Um, <laughs> Um, I will tell you how to find it. So if you go to YouTube and then look up performance, las tesis, L-A-S, second word, T-E-S-I-S, -S, um, un violador en tu camino. But I think if you look up um, performance colectivo, Las Tesis, L-A-S-T-I-T-E-S-I-S. -I, I don't know if that made any sense, but hopefully you can find it. Uh, otherwise, I'll go ahead and um, I will, I think I can put a link to it underneath our YouTube video uh, version of this, which will go onto the website after this is over. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I hope I give the opposite impression, but I am not very tech savvy. So <laughs> this is all. You never, you never know it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. But, um, well, in acknowledgement of, uh, of the ways that we do silence one another and speak, um, speak for instead of with one another, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors, saying together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. I invite you to pass the peace to us in the chat. Um, may the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Please pass the peace um, to yourself, to your neighbors, um, as maybe especially to yourself this morning and to your wonderful little strong voice in there, um, to your neighbors, to this world that so desperately, desperately needs it, um, to all of us. And I'm going to go pass the peace to Johan, our dog, who's the only one who I think is not <laughs> sleeping in the house. So be right back. Oh, peace. See, Raymond says, and also with you, Jillian says, peace of Christ to all, peace to and from Lyle and Barbara. Joseph gives thanks for lunch being served during the peace. <laughs> uh, Joseph is a cat, for those of you who don't know. Um, peace from Andy, Ashley, and Annabelle, peace. Willie says, peace, joy, and blessings to all. Peace, Willie. Joy says, Christ's peace to all of you and this world we live in. Peace from Becky, Henry, and Everett. And peace to everyone from Regina and her pup, Tenshi. Peace from Brian. Peace. It is good to be with you all. Um, 
I knew I was going to have um, the only, sometimes the only words I can think of are like not the things that I would choose to say in church, but a brain fart. I knew I was going to have a brain fart. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, I do have an announcement. Oh, here it is. Yes. There's a wonderful webinar that um, our very own Asheville's very own Reverend Tammy Forte Logan is leading called What's Love Got to Do With It? It is about white supremacy in the church. Um, if you think you um, no, whether you think so or not, all of us should go to this. Reverend Tammy is wonderful. She is powerful. Um, as an African American woman and a clergy person, she has an outside perspective. Um, and uh and can give those of us who live and move in um, white bodies or are perceived as white um, some perspective and some guidance and um she is wonderful she's the director of faith for justice in Asheville, um and is just great this is totally free um and um, you can contact us for registration information but it is saturday february 13th from 12 to 2, Saturday, February 13th, 12 to 2. Um, and just so you know, I am asking that all of our vestry um, and, uh, and staff at St. George's uh, come to this because there are ways that white supremacy, um, which is just the belief that white people are better than anybody else, um, that thinking does show up inevitably in our organization. Um, and Brian, you can come as a birthday gift to yourself. <laughs> that's your that's your birthday. You know, for my birthday, I want to know how white supremacy shows up in the church. Um, no, you don't have to come, but I I will uh, I'll look for a recording so you can watch it on another day. Um, anyway, I would really encourage all of you to come, if only uh, to keep me accountable to the ways that. Um, that these these things that I um, the this air that I've breathed my whole life uh, is impacting me and is um, and is doing the exact same thing that I uh, preached against. Uh, so yeah, we need to we need to do these things out of love for one another, out of hope for a world that's different from the way it is right now. And uh, and Tammy is a, is a great guide. Um, so I encourage you to do that. Uh, if you can give financially, please do. Uh, we would deeply appreciate it. You can donate uh, on our website by clicking the donate button. And you can also still send us a check um, to St. George's, which is one school road in Asheville. Um, another way that you, can, uh, that you can share with us is by um, sharing this video with others. Uh, in the world of social media where there's so much that's accessible all the time. Um, I think progressive church voices can sort of get lost in the uh, sort of in the floodwaters, if you will. And, um, and so knowing that, um, I don't know, I think not just St. George's, but I think uh, a lot of churches, um, could meet people where they need to be met. So if you feel that way, please share this so that others can find us as well. Um, Barbara Lassiter says GCD. And I don't know what that means. <laughs> but maybe it's a maybe it's an acronym that I don't understand. Maybe it's not. Um, I think that's it. Do you have any announcements, Michael? Mm, the, uh, oh, I had I had an announcement question yeah. for you. I came over to drop by some socks the other day, and I didn't see the box on the front steps. Has it moved? Um, every I picked up every I picked up a bunch of stuff on Saturday. Um, okay. so it may have it may have somebody may have put it inside, but I pick I picked up a bunch of stuff actually Good. on Saturday. So, um, okay. yeah, so that's, that's still the place to go if we have things. Is the yeah basically the front steps leading up to the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and you know, I, I should have checked. I didn't check to see if the box was still out there because it looked like everything had just been moved in. But the next well, time I'm over there, I'll check. Okay, and I didn't actually run up the steps um, to see. So maybe I just, maybe I left to see. Yeah, but thank, thanks for doing thank, that. Thank you all so much for that. It, um, 
you just keep it keep it coming. That's so, like is St. George is gonna run out of run out of stuff to give. It's like, man, y'all are what are y'all are y'all cleaning out your closet every week or something? I mean, there's like <laughs> hey, we have some <laughs> avid thrift store shoppers among us. And I think also people are ordering more stuff online and going through their stuff and getting rid of stuff. So. Thank you. Yeah, I don't want anybody running around naked because they gave away all their clothes. <laughs> Look at me. I gave the shirt off my back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If I see people at St. George's in their pajamas, I know you gave them off. You know? Anyway, thank you. Thank then you. Then we'll take up a collection for each other. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you. Thank you for being our, um, our person, our bridge. All right, well, let's turn our attention to Holy Eucharist. Um, if you are joining us for the first time or if you need a reminder, feel free to grab um, whatever you have in your house. Uh, if you would like to do communion at home, uh, either using consecrated or unconsecrated elements, either is fine. Um, and if you are choosing to wait for communion until we are all physically together, that's fine too. Um, and Michael will say a prayer after we share Eucharist um, for you. Um, so please gather some bread, um, some wine or juice. I have some juice here for myself and the family. Um, and participate in, in whatever way you, you feel is right. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit you have made for you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word made flesh, Jesus Christ, spoken through the prophets, and in, above all in the word made flesh, Jesus Christ, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. 
Therefore, according to his command, O God, together, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of all your children through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And I apologize because I realized uh, right as the service was starting that the um, the end of the uh, Padre Nuestro, the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer, it didn't make it onto my little little banner button thingamajig on this uh, this platform. So uh, it's not your imagination. And I'll just slow way, way down uh, so that you can repeat after me if you would like, because we are saying the the um, the Lord's Prayer in Spanish. Um, and I will say, if you would like, uh, maybe in honor of those many Chilean women, to uh, to pray using a different gender for God, um, who is neither male nor female, uh, you can say Madre Nuestra. Madre Nuestra. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Padre Nuestro, que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre, venga tu reino, hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día, perdona nuestras ofensas, como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación y líbranos del mal, porque tuyo es el reino, tuyo es el poder y tuya es la gloria, ahora y por siempre. Amén. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Friends, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and for all of us. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Let us pray. In union, O God, with your faithful people at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we offer praise and thanksgiving. Even if we do not receive you today in the form of the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, O Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Together, let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. The wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in this world. And may the blessing of the one God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer of all, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the birth of our Savior. Thanks be to God. Michael, I'm realizing that uh, that that dismissal is from Christmas, but we can always be thankful oh. for the birth of and Christ. <laughs> and I get, and I guess it's still Epiphany, isn't it? That's true. Yeah. That's true. It'll work. I'm yeah. thankful. <laughs> I guess God probably has more to worry about if we said the wrong, you know, dismissal. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you. I mean, there are many deacons who would be just like, this is Episcopal torture mm -hmm. to have the wrong stuff in front of me and have to mm -hmm. say it. No, not a whole no, lot. Torture, not, not a whole lot of Episcopal tortures me. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing I forgot to tell y'all is that we, uh, we have coffee hour. Even if you're just visiting, please join us if you would like. We would love to have you with us. And there's the link right there. Or not the link, but the ID. You can... Uh, Copy that, as the SNL comedian says, into your Zoom machine, and uh, it should work. So um, we would love to see you there. All right, blessings on your week. Thank you for joining us. Um, and let us know if, uh, if there's anything that we can do for you. Um, we're here. Bye, Michael. See you in a second. Bye. Good.